Hello and welcome everyone to a brand new game that I'm very excited to play and to share with all of you. It is time for Chicken Police Paint It Red. What is Chicken Police? It is a wild tale of love, death, chickens and redemption. Chicken Police is a buddy cop noir adventure with a carefully crafted world, a gritty story and lots of, lots of absurd humor. The game mixes elements of classic adventure games with the visual novel style storytelling. Now, if that doesn't intrigue you, I don't know what else should intrigue you. What do you? What else could you want more than a buddy cop noir movie game with chicken? Right. So that is why I'm playing it, and I'm very, very excited to play it and to share this experience with all of you big thank you to handy games for providing me with a copy for this game so i am able to share this wonderful game with all of you and i don't really want to waste too much time and want to jump right into the game to see what those chickens are clucking about so let's waste some time and start in the game Bad men are heavier than broken hearts. Raymond Chandler, big sleep. I ran out to get a pack of cigarettes, but I left my wallet at home. Yeah, that's me. I'm getting old. My name is Sonny, Sonny Featherland, an investigator for 20 years and once the star of the predatory division of the Clawville Police Department, one half of the legendary Look at that beautiful chicken, chicken police. But buying a pack of smokes is more than I can handle right now. Maybe I should just lay low. Yeah, I'll do that. The most colorful place Claw. in the wilderness. For all the gods, what bullshit. The last clucking color left this city years ago. And slowly I'll turn gray, too. Nice. What a cool intro. <laughs> this Still, this will I be expect? fun. We're living in a vast experiment and don't even notice that everything got clucked up a long time ago. We believe in this wonderland of peaceful coexistence. Wolves and sheep, chickens and hounds. Yeah, sure, why not? It's just ridiculous. The dog eats the chicken. It's in our nature. I'm not propping up the illusion anymore. 121 days and it's over. Retirement. Uh oh, a cop close to retirement? We all know what that means. What could possibly go wrong? Exactly. Clawville City, Rourke District, former Atlas Hotel. Oh dear. Crap. My office lock is a piece of shit if a dame can pick it. She stood in the darkness. The light painted stripes on her body. It whispered secret little things that were never there in the first place. But she was no zebra. Reality was just a light switch away. Elizabeth or Charlotte? I was sure she'd have a sophisticated sounding name. She had a bygone look in her eyes, older than this ancient building, and perhaps the whole city itself. Or maybe I'm just drunk. But she Could was be. the first womanly thing in my place for a long time, so I had to give her a chance. All right, so classic film noir start. Really love that intro. I'm excited. Okay, so and talk to her. Let's look around a little bit in what I assume is our office. Books I'm never going to read. Maybe nobody ever has. Fair enough. I don't even know what these papers are. I promised myself I'd write a novel one day. 
Well, you're so close to retirement, I'm sure nothing will go wrong. Okay, I don't have anyone to call, so... She doesn't seem so dangerous that I need to grab my gun, but you never know. That's true. Hey, we have a new item. Please use it. My last cigarette. Oh no! <laughs> You're lucky I don't have a light, pal. My wallet and my badge. The wallet is real. The badge ain't. Oh, the badge ain't. Chief Bloodboil took mine, so I got this one out of a pack of cornflakes. Oh, just in case. Okay, so we're we're a former cop. Maybe I'm a little bit confused. But if we're a former cop, how can we be close to retirement? Are we now a PI? I wanted to travel the world when I was a kid, but I think I'm going to end up dead in here, whether I like it or not. I don't know. Let's turn it off. Too bright. We used to be star cops a few years ago. Tabloid press, radio interviews, and even a book series. I don't miss those days. Of course, Marty, my old partner, would disagree. He just loved the spotlight. Oh, Marty. You crazy goose. This is... Uh, this is one of the most beautiful memories from my old life. Before Molly left me and took our daughter. We were together with Molly the parrot. The good things in life don't last long. The best ones always leave first. I saw that in the window of a shoe store. I never understood it or what it had to do with shoes. I will say just playing as anthropomorphic uh, animals um, <laughs> kind of reminds me of Bojack Horseman, which I'm a big fan of, so that totally hits the spot. M.B. Davis, the eternal king of jazz. The photo is from the days of jazz prohibition. I only heard the old man live one time, but I'll never forget that night. And not only because I woke up at the harbor without my gun, my badge, and my pants. Oh, wow. That sounds like a wild night. A wild gentleman. Talking about wild. Those guys rebuilt the city after the great fire of 867. My heroes when I was a little chick. I'm starting to think they should have left Clawville as it was, burned to the ground. Save some power. I don't even know where the key is. Whatever's inside is going to stay there forever. <laughs> okay. I don't see colors anymore. Only emptiness. Everything faded. <sighs> I need another drink. Okay, so... Here we have our inventory. A gun, cigarette, our fake badge, our wallet. Okay, let's talk to this mysterious lady. Who is this dame anyway? And what the cluck is she doing in my apartment on New Year's Eve? Let me introduce myself. My name is Deborah, Miss Deborah Ibanez. Okay. You're mistaken, ma'am. Oh, really? Please enlighten me, Mr. Featherland. I'm not a private eye. I'd recommend Philip... M uh, I mean, Mr. Philmar Lowe instead of me. He's a nice guy. Believe me, Mr. Featherland, it's not an accident I came to you. So how can I help you, lady? I work for the police, and I'm currently on leave. I couldn't accept private okay, commissions so we're even leave. if I wanted to. Not even from a classy dame like you. Am I that easy to read? That's my job. But tell me, since you've invited yourself in, would you like a drink? I don't... I don't usually drink. Well, there's always... Uh, it's always an opportunity to start. Well, I've got to have <laughs> one, and it'd be rude of me to drink alone. So, Fair maybe enough. some sherry? If you insist. 
but bourbon, please. Ah, thank the wild ones. That's all I have. What a coincidence. Yeah, so she come had on. plenty of time to look Spill around it. in our From the office. beginning. <laughs> okay, what's going on? Cheers. Okay. I want to look at my journal. Do we have a profile? That is cool. Debra Ibanez Impala. Gender female. Special feature, pretty and fragile. Nothing too special. She runs errands for her employer. Sophisticated lady, but I don't think she's from a particularly wealthy or influential family. Hotel Atlas. This used to be a nice place. Now we're competing to see who gets swallowed by decay first. The hotel's winning, but honestly, I'm not that far behind. Oh, that's interesting. The Chicken Police is a famous detective duo. Santino, Sonny Featherland, and Marty McChicken gained fame through a case the press called The Bloody New Year's Eve. They flew high for almost 10 years when a fateful brawl put an end to their legend. There's a series of novels about them by Meredith H. Marvel. They had published 10 books over the course of 7 years before the series faded out of public interest, as did the Chicken Police itself. Clawville's been an independent city-state for more than 900 years. During the city's foundation, four nations had joined forces, represented by the four animal figures and the four hands on the crest of Clawville. In reality, the tribal alliance of the reptiles and the great insect clans had also played an essential part in the city's founding, but they never got the, to be represented on the crest. This gave birth to a political and cultural antagonism between the species. Clovel preserved its political autonomy and the dream that it's the only state in the wilderness where predator and prey of any race can live in peace, hence the name the City of a Thousand Colors. That is interesting. Um, I like that there is so much backstory to the world. Um, definitely makes me intrigued to find out more. Three gods are revered in most places across the wilderness. They are the great wild ones who make up the holy trinity of creation, destruction, and silence. Hariti is the goddess of creation, Ptapi is the lord of destruction, and Mkvatiti is the genderless ghost of silence and nothingness, keeping the balance between creation and destruction in their never-ending conflict. Okay. Questioning. Oh, questioning points. That's so cool. All right. That's we'll talk some more. Now, if I understand correctly, your mistress is receiving threats. What kind of threats exactly? It's a very strange matter. First, there were letters. Then it came printed on a wine bottle's label, sent as a gift. Then carved into a brick thrown through the window okay and finally they painted it on the wall of the house in giant red letters i think it's time to dig a little deeper mm. if you don't mind i'd like to ask you some routine questions please that's why i'm here okay you function question me. oh and now we have clues are written. Okay, cool. Qu okay, let's question. Focus on what you know about the suspect. Is he or she suspic suspicious? Concentrate on that. Detective meter, okay. Focus. This fellow is rather suspicious. I need to concentrate on that. Focus. Suspicion. Question. Suspicious. You're suspicious? I'm suspicious. Why are you suspicious? Gather impression from the suspect. Every uh, impression adds a new question line. Oh. I see. Detective meter is your best friend. It shows how well the questioning is going. Keep it on the positive side, okay? 
Blah, blah. I like that. Plus 100. I must be cautious and smart. This dame seems shy, which I can use to my advantage. But I must be careful about what I say to her, or I can scare her off. Let's start gently, and when the time comes, we can go in hard. All right, Sonny. Okay, focus. I must be cautious and smart. Okay, impression shy. Who exactly are you, madam? Who exactly are you, ma'am? I'm... I'm not somebody important, Mr. Featherland. You're important enough to deal with such a delicate matter, right? I carry out the wishes of my employer, nothing more. This means simple paperwork, most of the time. You've been thrown into deep water, sweetheart. Tell me, can you even swim? Believe me, this is just as unpleasant for me as it is for you, if not even more. Okay. Shy and doubtful. Um... Let's go first with, like, a very basic question. Tell me, which part of the city do you live in? Calavera Hills? Get her comfortable. Flowerville, maybe. Look, I... I don't want to answer that. I'm here on behalf of my employer, and not on personal business. Fair point, Deborah. Let's try a different approach. That didn't work out well, I would say. Oh, it did work out well. Plus ten. Okay. Um... Well, th that seems a little aggressive. So why did you have to visit me at this particular evening? Why did you have to visit me this particular evening? I have my reasons. I may look like a silly little fawn, and maybe I am, but I still have common sense. I don't doubt that for a second, Miss Ibanez. This day is essential to my mistress, and she thought it's also important to you. Okay. A message in itself, for sure. But to be honest, even you are. Maybe connected to that case that we are famous for. You know for. what? I'll just take that as a compliment, even if it wasn't meant as such. Okay, we're doing well. That's good. Um. So she d doesn't want to talk about herself. The question is, should we ask her more about that? Um. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we ask this. Why didn't your employer come herself? Why did you come to visit me? Why not your employer herself? My employer is Miss Natasha Katsenko. Natasha she Katsenko, hasn't been leaving okay. her home lately. Only if she really has to. How so? New person. Miss Natasha is afraid. She's scared because of those unwanted messages. And everyone knows who she is. So, she's that kind of woman. I don't know what you mean. Of course you do, Deborah. Thank you, by the way. We're finally getting somewhere. Okay, that's interesting. We've Makes sense. the point long she's... enough. Deborah's hiding something, no question. Yeah. Let's focus on that. All right. Okay. Uh, ooh, this is a tough one. What do we ask? She's shy, doubtful, frightened, and hiding something. Maybe like a soft approach, like saying, I'm sure it's not intentional, but are you toying with me? I'm sure it's not intentional, but uh, are you toying with me? I'm not sure I understand you, Mr. Featherland. Cut the crap, Deborah. You're a pretty smart girl, and you can't hide that no matter how hard you try. But ever since we've been talking, I couldn't force one single straight answer out of you. I'm starting to think I'm terrible at what I do. Maybe I am. I'm sorry, Mr. Featherland, you're right. I'll try to be more straightforward next time. I appreciate that, ma'am. Ooh, that wasn't good. Um, I in some sort of jam. Are you in some sort of jam? 
Nothing of the sort. There are simply things better left unsaid. Then you're wasting my time. I trust your instincts. You'll manage it. Uh-oh. Yeah. And I have no other choice, right? To be honest, no, Mr. Featherland. Not really. I'm not sure if this is going well. Uh, don't you think this... Oh. Let's go with this one. Do you think this whole thing is a little suspicious? Don't you think this whole thing is a little suspicious? Look, Santino. I'll explain everything. I have no doubt about that. You look just the type, sweetheart. No offense. I'll take that as a compliment. Or maybe I'll act like I haven't heard it. You see, we're starting to understand each other. Okay, we're getting there again. So why should I believe you at all? Tell me, Deborah. Why should I believe you at all? Because my mistress trusts you. Should that be enough? If you really like what she thinks you are, then yes. Damn, what can I say to that? Look, I didn't mean to back you up against the wall. You have a way with words, sweetheart. Did you ever want to be a cop? No, not for the world. <laughs> Smart answer. Okay, okay. So be honest and tell me what you're so afraid of. Be honest and tell me what you're so afraid of. You know, Mr. Featherland, my mistress's partner is Hobart Wessler. Or as most people know him, Hobart Wessler. Ibn Wessler, the Kingpin. The Kingpin? Exactly. Feathery gods, help me. So you get it now. The secrecy. To put it mildly, I think I understand it all. Wessler. This little piece of the puzzle changes everything. Question ring ring. Ooh, true detective? We nailed it. What and clue? The employer Natasha's currently is, uh, and the employer Natasha's currently current significant other is the infamous gangster Ibn Wessler. That that was pretty good. That was fun. That's a fun way of questioning. I like it. So the mysterious messenger, Miss Deborah Ibanez, uh, lawyer, is certain Miss. Is a certain Miss Natasha Katsenko. Even Wessler. Is there any more information here? There's a remarkable... There's a remarkable green eyes and she's definitely in trouble. So am I. Oops. She's the employer of Miss Deborah. Giving serious... Threats. Girlfriend of the tourist gangster, even Wessler. Rat. Special feature good looking, charismatic, and a clucking gangster. One of the most well known gangsters in Clawville. Real estate mogul, bank director, museum owner, distiller, smuggler, and information broker. That's only. The half of what I've heard about him. He has his dirty little paws everywhere in the city's underworld. Okay, interesting. I really like that uh, questioning tool, I guess. Um, let me know what you think, but I thought that was really, really interesting. Um, it adds a little bit of a spiciness to Asking questions in Behind these that point door and click style lies games. the kingdom of dirty clothes, cigarette butts, and empty bottles. Okay. Why Can don't we talk you take to it to the more? police? Just go there and file a report. Photos, flashing lights, fingerprints, you know the drill. The evidence is very clear. 
even a moderately talented detective could easily wrap this case up. Or just try the phone. Triple five, triple one. Please, take a look at this. Okay, she has something. Well, okay. Let's see. What did we get? Oh. I know Molly very well. Please note this when deciding whether or not to accept my assignment. Miss Ibanez is a trusted friend. Treat her as gentleman. N. Okay. Sour Club. I felt like I'd been hit on the back of my head with a blackjack. Reality tilted. Molly. Good gods. What was her name doing there? I glanced at the opposite Molly. wall with the well-worn picture frame. Oh, all right. Like ex. an eternally dark hole in the wall. A missing piece. She was wearing a light silk dress and singing a lullaby. The waves caressing her beautiful long legs. Why Molly? Why now? That is a good question. Mr. Oh, you Fetterland? made it personal. Santino, are you all right? What the hell is this supposed to mean? I don't know anything, Mr. Santino. My mistress told me to give this to you. She said you'd understand. Don't you? Oh, of course I understand, Miss Ibanez. I get it very well. But this case is becoming more and more confusing. It's starting to look like blackmail. Blackmail? Don't play innocent with me. But... All right. When can I visit? Visit? Me? Not you. Miss Katsenko. Exactly. Oh, yes. You can find her at the Tsar Club. Tsar Club? Didn't you tell me she's not the social kind? That she's especially unsociable? Or does she only like loud and crowded clubs? No, she's really not like that. But she owns the place. Judging by the flyer, it must be a very busy club. Especially on New Year's Eve. Right? Probably. I'm sure you'll have no trouble finding Miss Katsenko, but there's one small problem, Mr. Featherland. What is it? Let me guess. Mr. Wessler better not know about my visit. Exactly. How did you know? Oh, we're an old bird. Twenty years experience, ma'am. Yeah. Oh, and please, call me Sonny. It was a pleasure to meet you, Mr. I mean, Sonny. I'll talk about the rest with Ms. Katsenko in person. A good friend of mine would be happy to take you home if you'd like. I'd appreciate that, Sonny. Oh, our friend is... Okay, let, let's have a look. Natasha must know my wife Molly from somewhere, or perhaps she has very good informants. I must find out what the connection is. There's the... Czar Club Lewis Lewis C. Hayworth male from feature an old friend of mine he is stuttering heavily when he talks this is the owner of the once reputable Atlas Hotel and a good friend of mine At the moment he's my landlord it's only the two of us living in this unbelievable enormous hotel he's crazy about detective stories and he gladly helps me whenever I ask him Who's number five 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 nine three two? Let me write that down. Luckily, I brought some pen and paper. I guess I called him now. Oh, okay. Tells me. Five five. Five, nine, three, two. Hey, Lewis, am I bothering you? No, 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 no. Of course not, Sonny. Old friend, what's up? 
Could you come over? I've got a favor to ask if you're not busy. For you, anything. Just a minute. Okay, perfect. Lewis there arrived a few minutes later. He lived in the rooms above, so it wasn't difficult getting here. Not to mention that he's a rabbit. It was a quick hop. The Atlas Hotel was his inheritance. The hop and the cop. It was once a well-renowned place, but not anymore. The last economic crisis ruined it. And now, besides me, he was the only resident of this enormous place. Let's have a look at the him. The good old rabbit. I can always count on him, even on New Year's Eve. Thanks for being so quick, Lewis. Can you drive Miss Ibanez home? I have some things to take care of. Of course, Sonny. <clears throat> you know anything for you. Thank you for being so considerate, Sonny. I appreciate it. Don't mention it. Goodbye, then. So long, Deborah. All Before right. I visit the club, I have to take a detour. I've got a feeling that this case isn't going to be a one-man job. And there's only one bird in this city I can trust. My ex-partner, Marty. He's going to be at the station. I can only hope he'll be willing to talk to me. Okay, so we have to talk to Marty. And I guess we can leave now. Main scenes. Main scenes move the story forward. These scenes also determine which locations open up or close down. You need to complete all of these if you want to beat the game. Limited scenes. Limited scenes are open for a specific duration, which is determined by the main story progress. If you are a completionist, be sure to visit all of them before you move to the next main scene. Closed scenes. Closed scenes cannot be reached for the time being. This state will often change throughout the story, progression, and can, tempor tempor can be temporary or permanent. Top tip, pick the next main scene if you are absolutely sure you don't want to visit any of the available limit. Okay. We have Clawal ED. I guess we can only go there. It was New Year's Eve, and I was driving, half drunk, risking my whole life's work. But still, it didn't feel any different. Every day was the same, and the 121 days I had left till my retirement seemed like an eternity. When I look out the window of the hotel room I call home, I see the same thing every day. A woman in a red nightgown dances slowly in circles to smooth music. The nine o'clock show with a glass of cheap bourbon and the red gown with the silent music. In the meantime, the proud city of Clawville is slowly eating itself alive. And we're still here with nothing left to lose but our sanity, while others, the smart ones, had already gone. Molly. Does her name really upset me this much? All those years of solitude, and those I still jump faces. without question every time I hear it. And then there's Marty, my ex-partner, who hates me. But I know I have to speak with him, no matter what. Why do I feel like the past is watching me on this goddamn night? We definitely had a falling out with Marty. Chapter 1. Detour. I knew where to find Marty. At the station, we'd always draw straws about holiday duty. Marty never joined in. He always took the New Year's Eve shift, even though he had someone to go home to. I understood. Ten years ago, we survived the night the press called the Bloody New Year. Forgotten by Clawville, but not by us. We both left parts of ourselves behind that night. All right, everyone. I think this is a good time to take a break from this intense investigation, which I'm sure will get only more intense as we continue. But we'll continue 
very soon. If you enjoyed the episode, please let me know in the comments below. Would love to hear your thoughts about the game. I really enjoyed it so far. I think so far it's a really cool uh, film noir type uh, story and the absurdness of the animals just adds the extra little sprinkle of spiciness to it. So really, really enjoy it. If you enjoyed the episode, please give the video a like, maybe consider subscribing to the channel, share the video with friends, family, and the people on the internet. If you want to go the extra mile in supporting the channel, go check out the Patreon link down below. That all helps me out a whole a bunch and will bring you more content in the future. I will be back with more Chicken Police Painted Red tomorrow. Until then, have a great time.